Hey, it's Aurelius, hope you're doing well. In this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to design and create an ebook from scratch using Canva. Here's an ebook that I designed in just a few minutes. This is a hypothetical example, but we've got the title page, you've got the main introduction page, including an image, some stats and figures that perhaps you may also want to include in your ebook. A main body section of your ebook, like this right here, where I'm including steps, and an about page where you can feature your bio and also a connect with me section. So these make up the core of your pages and all you simply need to do if you want more pages is to duplicate it, but we'll discuss more about that in this video. Now, before we get started, if you don't have a Canva account, be sure to look in the description box below where I've provided a 30 day trial of Canva Pro, giving you more options in terms of photos, elements, and everything else. Now, after you've signed up or logged into your Canva account, it's a good idea to make sure you have your brand colors in mind, or if you don't have an idea, a good place to start is using Canva's color palette generator. Here's a color palette generator. If you wanna to get to this page, I'll link it up in the description box too. What this color palette generator will do is to help generate some colors for your branding. You could start off by selecting one of these that you may like, otherwise you can select a color or theme. Let's say you want blue, then you simply search for blue, and then those color palettes based on blue will come up. Because I've already designed the ebook as you saw in the introduction, the color palette that I use is called Rocks and Barefoot. So if you do want to use that color palette, feel free to search that or look and browse here. So select it and you'll see these four colors. We've got Ivory, Sand Dollar, Dusty Rose and Gray. What you'll do then is to go to your brand kit. So you can find this going to home and then on the left side, you'll see brand kit. From here, you add your brand colors and because we found our color palette already, we can simply add it. Now there is a caveat, if you aren't a Canva Pro user, then the maximum amount of colors that you can add is three. Now, why use the brand kit in the first place, you may be asking? Well, it's going to save you a heap of time when you're actually designing because those colors will already be in your brand kit. To start adding your color palette, you simply click the plus sign. So I'll start doing that right now from scratch for you so you can see what it looks like. You'll see this if you haven't added your brand colors, but I'll click the plus. Going back to your Canva color palette, all you need to do now is to copy each of the colors. So it's a matter of hovering over the color, clicking on copy, that'll copy it to the clipboard. Going back to your color palette, then pasting it in like so. So rinse and repeat for the rest of the colors. Do note again, you can only add three colors maximum if you don't have a Canva Pro account. So what I suggest you do is to add the three main colors and something like white, black, or gray, those kind of neutral or you know those main colors, you don't really necessarily need to add it. I'll add the next one, so copy, go back here, paste it in and repeat for the next color. So with this ebook, I am going for more of the neutral tones, earthy tones, as you can see right here. Going back to your Canva homepage, click on create a design and simply search for A4 document, or you can start with a legal size document, depending on the size that you want. You can go with the square, you can go with the landscape size, whatever it is you wanna do, you can select it from here. As a side note, when we're saving it, we are going to save it as a PDF document, so it can be viewed on pretty much all devices. We aren't necessarily going to format it based on an Amazon Kindle ebook or something like that. So that's why we can select pretty much any size, but the size that I like to work with in terms of ebooks is an A4 slash legal document. Once you've searched it, click on the actual selection and you'll see a blank canvas. The first thing we're going to do is to work on our title page. Let's add a background first. So click on photos and search anything you want. I search for laptop. So what I'm going to do is actually replicate what I've already designed. Browse through the photos. The ones with the crown tab, as you can see, is a Canva Pro photo. So you do need to purchase it based on a one-time fee, or you can, of course, upgrade to a Canva Pro account, giving you unlimited access to all that. The photo that I use was this one right here. It is a free image, which is great. So I'll click once, now that's added. What I'm going to do next is to expand it and increase the size so it covers the actual background. I'll move it over so we can see a bit of the laptop. That looks pretty good right there. Now, once you are happy with the position and the size of your background image, simply go to text and we're going to add a heading. Click that once, that'll insert your heading just as a placeholder. And this is where you go ahead and enter the title of your ebook. I'll use Instagram marketing as the title. Again, this is all hypothetical example. So everything I will be showing in this video is all for demonstration purposes. To change the font style, make sure you select the title. Then from here, we are going to select the font style that we want. 
The one that I used uh, in this demo is Playfair Display. And what I've also done is bolded it. So I'll click on bold. You can also change the size of the title, clicking it and then increasing or decreasing the size. Next up, add a subtitle. If you do have one for your ebook, I'll select the add a subheading option. Now you see it's inserted. I'll just move it with the move option. Enter the title of your ebook. I've already typed it out right here. For the subtitle, I won't be using the Playfair font style. I'll be using my secondary font style, which will be the Open Sans. And that's another thing you may want to consider font combinations in terms of your branding. All titles and headings will use Playfair Display, while the body of the text will use Open Sans. Next is to make sure you size it. So I'm going to decrease this box. And you may also want to decrease the size of the subtitle. I've decreased it so that it fits on one line and now I'll just move it to where I want. You can use the guides. As you can see, the purple line indicates that it's in the center. That's the title page all done. The next page you may want to consider doing is some sort of introduction page. Of course, this depends on the ebook that you're creating. You may want to add other pages before the actual introduction. Before this demo, let's go ahead and create an introduction page. We'll just click on add page. I'm going to add a chapter heading. So we'll click on add a heading again and we'll type in introduction. I'll change the font to Playfair, making sure it's bold. Now I'll decrease it and I'll move it over to the top, making sure I leave a bit of gap in the left and the top right there. I'll decrease the title. So I'll probably use something like 30. That looks pretty good. And now I'll just move it over. I'm also going to increase the size of this canvas so you can see more. So I've zoomed in. Next up, I want to add a divider or a line underneath the actual title. So I'll go to elements. Under lines and shapes, you'll see the line right here. So I'll add that, click it once, move it over to the top somewhere around here. It is rather thick, so what I'm going to do is to make sure I click on weight and then where it says line weight, I'm going to enter two instead of the five. And I want a little opacity or transparency, so make sure I selected that, I'll click on transparency. You can decrease the transparency using this or we can simply enter what we want. So I'll choose 20. That's that. Now, if you are worried whether you have to do this each time you have a new page in your ebook, the answer is no, because what we're doing is creating kind of the template so that all we need to do after that, once we have new pages, is to duplicate it. So I'll show you in this video too. But before we do that, let's add some body text. We'll go back to text, and this time we'll click on add a little bit of body text. Click that once. Select the font style and make sure the font size is the size that you want. I've selected 15. Now all you need to do is to start typing away whatever you want to add into your ebook. I've added some text right here that of course doesn't make sense, but this is the infamous Lorem Ipsum template that you can find everywhere online. What you wanna make sure you do is to make sure you size it so there's a gap on the left and right too. You wanna to make sure you align it so it starts where the title, the heading of this chapter also starts as you can see right here. And to help you with this, you also wanna make sure you the alignment is set to justified. If you click it, this is left aligned. If you click again, that's justified. So justified means that it'll take the entire space from left to right so that it's neater. If you look, if I select left, it actually leaves some gaps which may look pretty ugly. So I'll select justified and also give some gap on the right. Let's go ahead and add a photo that's relevant to what this subject is about. You don't have to do this, but I do wanna show you how to start adding photos if you want to. I'll head to photos. I'm going to search for social media and select this photo right here. Click it once and all you need to do is to resize it. So I'll resize it and make sure it's aligned and positioned accordingly. To keep it aligned and neat, I've just aligned it so that it starts the same position as the text. Okay, next up, what I'm going to do is add a bit more text right here. An easy way is to simply duplicate what you've already got in terms of the text box. To duplicate anything in Canva, all you need to do is to select that box element or whatever it may be, and then you can use the option key on the Mac, and I believe it's Alt on a Windows system. And while you hold that key, simply drag using your mouse, and that'll make a copy, as you can see. You can alternatively click that box and then do a simple copy and paste, as you can see, using Command C, then Command V, or Control C and Control V. So I'll duplicate it right now, and then what I'm going to do is simply drag it down, 
so that it fills the bottom right there. I'll zoom out so you can see what it looks like. The first page it does look quite cluttered and that's because there's quite a lot of text. So what I'll do is delete some text so that there's some spacing at the bottom. Alrighty, now with the introduction page all done, the next page that we can work on is a stats and figures page. To speed things up, whenever we wanna create a new page on our ebook, we can simply click on the duplicate page button. Click that once, that's ready made a copy. As you can see, page three and page two. I'll zoom in so you can see in more detail. If I go back to the completed ebook that I designed, you can see what it looks like. This is what we'll be creating and designing. I'll go ahead and edit the title enter Instagram stats. If it isn't positioned right, all you need to do is just drag and then now it's repositioned. Here's where your brand colors come handy. If you go and look at the example right here, we've got the background, right? You can do this, you don't have to, but I'm going to do it just to differentiate some of the pages and make it stand out. To change the background, simply click anywhere on the white space on the background. And then I'll go to the background color, color palette. And next you'll see the brand colors that you added. Let's go ahead and use this color right here as the background, so a lighter tone. Delete anything you don't need. We won't be needing this photo. We won't be needing this extra text. I'll leave the text like this. And what I will do next is do a quick search if you go to templates and search for something like infograph, you can use some of these pre-made designs. Let's say you wanna add one of these graphs on your page, simply click it. Canva's going to ask add template as new page. We'll click on add as new page. And from here, we can pick and choose what we want. I wanna use this timeline. So let's go ahead and just hover over the elements and the text that selected everything. And then we'll do a quick copy, go back to our canvas right here, and then we can paste. Of course, you can use your keyboard shortcuts to simply do a copy and paste. Let's position it first, selecting everything, and we'll position it somewhere there for now. We can always clean up and reposition afterwards. The first thing you may notice is the text isn't really standing out. The white against this dusty brown color. So let's go ahead and change the font color. We'll simply hover over each of these sections because if we do hover over all of them, the color or the text color palette doesn't appear. So what we'll do instead is to select it. Then you'll see the text color, change it to black. I'll go ahead and do this fast forward. The bottom section's done, but the top still needs to be changed. So we'll select everything. This time it works. So we'll click on text color, then clicking on the black color. Next up in sticking with our brand colors, the next thing we can modify is this line. We can select it once, click on the color, and we'll choose this color right here, the darker tone. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. From here, you can modify anything you want. So what I'll do is insert the text that I actually want. Okay, I've added the text for this timeline. You can see establish IG stories, IG TV, and IG reels, but don't count on me on these facts because this is all hypothetical. You may also notice the extra line of text at the bottom. You can or don't have to have this if you don't want to, but I'm going to remove it. So in order to remove it, because it is grouped together, you can see with the dotted lines, we can ungroup it. Once it is ungrouped, it's no longer locked together and we can simply delete it. Or you can simply select the text and do a simple delete, but you will see the box still exists. So it depends how you wanna approach it, but clean and simple way is to make sure you ungroup it, then deleting that actual text box. Okay, now the timeline's done, I'm going to show you how to add a graph. Canva's actually got graphs built in if you go to elements and if you scroll down, you'll see charts, click on see all, that'll show a full list of all the charts you can create. So you could very well start with the charts or you can go with the templates option, which is what we did right here and then pick and choose what you want, then modifying it. But let's go ahead and select this chart right here. Once it's inserted, you'll see more options like the percentage, the line weight, percentage label and rounded endpoints. What you can do is to change the percentage. Let's say I want 30% only, enter 30% and then enter. I'll resize it so it actually fits somewhere around here. Changing the colors too, I'll just change the teal color to one of my brand colors, this dark one right here. And I'll change the dark gray to a lighter color. So I'll choose this tone right here. That's what it looks like. I also wanna add the percentage label in the center right here and making sure that the text isn't too large. So I'll decrease the font size like so. You can also add some text somewhere here to actually show them what this is about. Again, simply duplicate your existing text. I'll just do a simple duplicate, resize it, 
Here's a text that I want to add 30% of the world are actively using Instagram regularly. So we'll use that and then we'll just drag it somewhere around here. This time I'll just bold it so it stands out a bit more and let's resize it again. Let's add one more graph and that'll be a bar graph. We'll select the bar graph template right here. Let's clear the data and start from scratch. With this graph, I want to show the daily active users of Instagram versus some of the other social media platforms. So for this section right here, I'll put in users and here, this will be the actual social media platform. I'll put in Instagram right here. Let's say Facebook, then we've got YouTube and let's add one more, TikTok. And for users, let's say it's based on billions, right? Let's say 10 billion, then we've got seven, then maybe another nine billion here. Of course, making all these up. And let's say for TikTok, there's 12. And now you can see the graph, we'll just resize it down somewhere there and change the color too. I'll choose this one right here. There are a couple of other settings. If you select the graph, go to settings, you can show the label or you don't have to, or show the grid as well, or you don't have to. It's really subtle, but it's up to you. Changing the series as well, plot columns as series or plot rows as series showing different colors. I'm happy with that. So I'll just resize it so there's a bit of spacing. I'll duplicate this text over and here I'll put in daily active users. Perhaps even center this. So I'll center it like so. And now I'll just align it somewhere around there. Now I'll select these two graphs, move it down a bit, moving this as well so that it's in the center. A few more tweaks. And that looks pretty good there. So we are done with the stats and figures. Let's move on to creating a body page for your ebook. We did somewhat do this with the introduction. So really all we need to do is to duplicate this page rather than duplicating the stats page. So head over to the introduction page and then click on duplicate page. That's made a copy below it. So what we can do is to simply move it down. An alternate way is to click on the grid view and you can rearrange pages like so by dragging and dropping where you want it. I'll move it to the end right here and I don't need this template. So we'll click on delete. Let's go back in focus mode and deselect the closed grid view. With this page, I'm going to put in getting started reposition. I'll leave the first paragraph right here, delete anything I do not want. If you're writing a how-to guide, what will come handy are screenshots. So you could take some screenshots of what it is you're trying to instruct or guide your readers on, but I'll head over to photos just to save a bit of time. I don't wanna take any other screenshots and I'll search for Instagram right here. I'll select this image here and let's reposition and do a bit of cropping. Don't need the hand, so I'll just crop it, crop the left side too. So all I have is this right here. I wanna show my readers some steps on how to, let's say, get started or sign up to Instagram. So what I'll do is to duplicate some of these texts. So I'll make a copy of this text box, again, making a duplicate right there, and then I'll resize it. So it actually wraps or is next to this photo. Reposition like so, and then I'll move on to the Next step, so which is guiding them on the, the steps. So the first step could be something like download the app. Step number two is to sign up. Then we can set up your account. And with this next step, I'll put in switch from a switch to a creator or business account. What I can also add are things like annotations. So we'll go elements. I'll make sure I'm out of this search. Under lines and shapes, we'll select the arrow. Let's adjust the weight of the arrow and make it thicker like so. And I'll resize it somewhere like that. I'll move it here somewhere and then I'll rotate it so that it is minus 180 degrees like so. I'll make it a bit smaller and somewhere around here. Change the color as well to match the branding. Make it a tad smaller. And there you have another body page. All that needs to be done now is to complete the rest of your ebook. You've created three different styles of pages. You've got this page like this, that looks quite simple with one image. Then you've got this stats and figures page and this page where it has multiple steps. Let's now go ahead and create an about page. What I'll do is simply duplicate this page right here. Now it's made a copy. I'll put in about right here. I'll type in about and just move it somewhere here. Delete anything you do not need. So I'll just delete these ones, leaving this one so that we can actually 
type in our bio. I wanna add a self-portrait here. On my computer, I've got my self-portrait ready. So all that needs to be done is to simply drag and drop it anywhere here that will upload it. Click once to insert it. Let's now reposition and resize it somewhere around there. You will see the text box overlapping the image. So simply resize it and then type away. That's the text box I've left. What you can also do is to make it a bit more personal and pop. So I'll say, hi, I'm Aurelius. And this time I will just change this part of the text to Playfair and let's bold it and make it a bit bigger. Something like that. I'll move the image somewhere there so it's aligned with the actual text. You can also add more text, which is what I've done right here. At the bottom, you can add a connect with me section. Let's go ahead and do that. To save time, I'm going to duplicate this text box right here. Delete this text here. And from here, we'll say connect with me. Let's add some social media buttons and icons. Go to elements and let's add Instagram first. Click once to insert it. Let's move that element down below so that it's somewhere around here. We don't wanna resize yet because we'll do that all at once. Go ahead and add any more icons that you wanna add. I'll select the Facebook, you can also search it. I'll also add TikTok, select this one. With these three, I'm going to select all of them and resize it all together. Don't worry too much about positioning because we are going to clean it up. Let's add one more and that is YouTube. We'll select this one right here. That looks good around there. So what I'll do now is to just have it somewhere around here. And don't worry too much about positioning because what we're going to do now is selecting all of them. And then where it says position, we can tidy it up. So we'll tidy up and now it's positioned and given even spacing in between. To link these icons up to your actual Instagram handles and URLs, simply click on the individual icon, select link and then enter the URL of that profile. This is mine right here. All I need to do now is press enter and you rinse and repeat for the rest of the icons. Okay, at this point, the about page is done. You can't add anything else you want to it, of course. What you can do if your ebook or guide is quite long is adding a table of contents. This does need to be done manually because there's no easy way with Canva as it is a design tool. So it's a matter of going to one of your pages, let's say this one right here, duplicate it, and then naming this table of contents. And what you can do right here is start adding those chapter titles. So it would be introduction, then Instagram stats, getting started and about. And then what I'm going to do is make a copy of this right here, duplicate it, make sure it's aligned, but this time I'll enter the page numbers. I won't consider the title page a page and also the table of contents. It will start from introduction. So the introduction will be page one. In this case, I will go here and enter one, then let's say two, three and Four. I'll just tweak this a bit and move it across so it looks something like that. Deleting anything else you don't want. And that's a very rough table of contents. You can also add dotted lines, which is what I've done right here. I simply went to lines and shapes, added the line, but instead I changed the style to the dotted. So that way it's more readable, as you can see. On the footer of each page, you can add page numbers. It's just a matter of adding text. Let's add a little bit of body text. Let's say this is page one. I'll move it down. Let's give this a size 15, somewhere around there. I won't add the dot or the period. If you do wanna add page numbers, it's important to make sure you add those page numbers first when you're creating your first kind of uh, body or your page template. That way, when you are duplicating, that page number will always show right here. That way you don't need to keep adding it or duplicating it for the next page. Once you're done with your ebook, download it. Go to download right here and then choosing PDF. You can choose PDF standard or print. PDF print usually saves it in high quality and click on download. Now that the PDF's downloaded to my computer, this is what it looks like in the PDF viewer. You've got the title page, the table of contents, introduction, the stats, getting started, and the about page. All right, and there you have it. Those are the steps in order to create an ebook from scratch using Canva. If you do want some tips, tutorials, and relevant videos in order to market your digital products and ebooks, then do look in the description box below. 
where I've provided relevant videos to those. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful and you want to see more tutorials just like this, be sure to let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching and looking forward to sharing the next training with you. Thank you.